Hello, welcome, and thank you for coming. Today, I will be showing you how you can play satisfactory with achievable efficiency, but also keep a balance of fun. That is, I want to share with you how I go about playing satisfactory throughout today's video. But, more importantly, my logic and strategy as I go through the entire process. Take a look at the claw here. This structure is what I went over in my recent guide or video. I left it open to you so you could see how it works. And today the goal is chill. We have to get the water hooked up. Let's begin. Now, this is bigger than my usual build. But the claw here has a purpose. We will get to that. But first thing is first, gotta get started on the final inputs of the water. I'm going to bring it from the ocean, but I have a plan. I built a road that we will piggyback off of, and I brought the pumps. I will create a housing or enclosure area if necessary, but aesthetics are another phase I can get into some other time. Today, logistics are priority, and I need something like 6500 water. That means to me that I can go with 32 water extractors at roughly 205 water per minute to start. I need the rest of my power slugs for the refinery, and I like using the number 32, being an IT guy. That's a nice number to start with if something pops up. There is plenty of valid water extraction space in this area that I am using, so this works for me. That's plenty of pipes. And later if I want to overclock the extractors further, I have room to grow the claw or split off of another project. Later, I will probably slow them down anyway to bleed off my pure water output from my nuclear facility. I don't think I have to worry about that just yet, at least for another few dozen or so gaming hours. While the water is being brought to the claw, let's get back to what the structure is for. The claw determines who will go and who will stay. Okay, I couldn't resist. It is a modular iron and copper refinery structure that was completed in phases over time with excess resources I chose not to sink. The wonderful thing about this structure is that I was able to build it as I progressed through the tech tree. It is efficient, but one of my favorite things about it is that it can be overclocked over time to handle a very heavy input. In fact, I have it set to drain every node that it is wired to, to the maximum belt tier as well. And I have power now, we talked about that in a previous video, so now we can get to the normal, regular content that I'd like to make. Okay, back to water. Let's go over some of my biggest notes to keep in mind concerning transporting large amounts of water. First, I like to keep my water off of the ground. Not super high off the ground, but enough to be able to walk below it. I treat it very much like a traditional bus system. When it comes to this amount of pipes, I don't get fancy and twist things around or purposefully clip the pipes to create something cool. Not because I have an issue with that, I love learning little unique building techniques. No, it's because I am worried that an update might mess up the pipes. They already have a reputation for being finicky. This iron copper refinery here is intended to be used for alternate recipe experimentation in the future. I need the heart to be strong and reliable, so I went with my gut and stuck with belt. I'll cover her up later with the beauty pass, of course, in another video, and get those sweet time-lapse clips. Shortest run of materials possible, of course, as far as the pipes go. Every bit of distance saved helps with overall efficiency and time. So I scouted out and identified my spot. Thankfully. I had made a rudimentary road out here while watching TV or something to numb the pain. So scouting the spot wasn't too bad. Satisfactory isn't new, but if you were wondering where I put my pumps, I put them as near the water source as possible, even when I get very far away from the water source. Because I built a road to have a sort of grid, I just placed some markers on the building and did a mock-up of how I wanted them to approach the claw. Organizing the pumps were simple. Word of caution though. If you are planning on putting a massive amount of water extractors down, make sure you verify you are not too far out. Some of the beaches have hard stops for water extraction capability, even though you can still build out there. Other foundation pieces and other building pieces are fine, but water extractors can be a little tricky. This is partly why my nuclear facility layout has an odd setup when it comes to the modules for the water extractors. That's where I learned my lesson, admittedly. 
The structures I will use to enclose the water will be an exception, certainly not required, but I already kind of have an idea of what kind of spacing I'd like to do. I don't usually cover up stuff, but I'm definitely going to cover up these pumps. The flooring that I have here can always be adjusted later if I have any glitches with an update or if these clipping wires end up with problems. Also, I would like to add that if you have any issues with running spans of pipe and they curve around on the other side, all that you have to do or is required to eliminate that is to drag them from the new pipe frame to the source line. I like to go back and forth, placing a pipe each time I sway my mouse left or right, but that doesn't always work out so well. Finally, I used a lot of pumps. Not very efficient. Some of these decisions were simply to maintain my sanity, keeping that organic aspect to this playthrough while staying efficient and modular. I knew and was committed when I decided to build the claw that this was coming. I guess I could think about it like a mini hog? It was definitely a time sink, and it was a hog in that respect. Still, I am happy to report that I am still sane. I don't think I bit off more than I could chew. Now to wrap up the waterline section before we move on to discussing more interesting things. Similar to the nuclear power plant water extractor setup, the structure today is basic, but again, we will worry about dressing it all up later on in a future video. You may want to have some output structures or little joint watershed stations to cover your pumps if you run them tight like I did. Also, I think they will add to the road system and desert theme I envisioned in general. This network is also meant to accommodate my road system, but I don't want to take the long way around. So I cut across in a way that made sense and involved the least amount of deaths when not paying attention to my hover pack. Or you can think of it this way, I will build a dangerous out of code ramp that I will traverse in my golden cart just for you. For the example that I created for you, I am using the level or horizontal method to eventually pump all of the water across the desert to the facility. Then the pipes just drop down to each refinery, easy peasy. I didn't add any pumps except where the head lift needed to be addressed. I initially considered pumping it along faster, but I think that this is plenty sufficient. I'll use valves here again near the inputs in case the water does anything funky. Because it is going to take so long for the water to travel here from the source, I am not using any buffers, at least initially. I'm attempting to have the least points of failure as possible, fancy tricks some other time. Alright, so what to do with the iron and copper? We have a total of 288 refineries in the claw. Be sure to watch the next video when we power this baby up. Will it run as intended? Or did the claw receive damage when it landed? I was really pushing and very hopeful that I could, but I was unable to power it up today. I promise the next video we'll have that. Then, we will start shipping this stuff out and get into all sorts of stuff and things. As I mentioned earlier, we are going to use the pure iron and pure copper ingot recipes to input into other alternate recipes. I am going to use iron and copper as currency, at least that's how I'd like to think of it. With the yield this refinery can produce with iron and copper, I knew I wanted to take advantage of it. I have specifically held off on getting too deep into any alternate recipes for when I start this channel up and start sharing videos with you. I want that to be part of the experimentation for this playthrough. I don't want to produce fractions of a unit of endgame components, especially when it comes to those top tier ones. I want solid, dependable numbers. This should help with paying for that. I hope you return for the upcoming videos, because that is what we are going to get into next once we power up the claw. It is time to start dominating the map and building new modular facilities. I don't use spreadsheets for this game, I want to play it. So I do some basic numbers and play organically from there. If I can't figure it out on the in-game calculator, coincidentally the keybind for that is your end key, and some brief research, I am putting myself at risk of entering an ever-growing rabbit hole that has no end and I have no time to make videos for you. So, since I can't completely min-max my experience and hide away for a decade on games like this anymore, let me ask you, yes, you, what is the most intensive time sink you have ever had in a building game? How many estimated game hours did it take, and what game was it? Let us know in the comments down low. So, in order to save time, progress efficiently, and have a sophisticated playstyle where you develop your eventual megabase with modular organic expansion, 
We have discussed the benefits of looking into efficient alternate recipes for base tier products like iron and copper. Isn't it wonderful that you can input a little water and achieve such a high yield of base ores that can then be compounded into other alternate recipes? I can't wait to get into that journey with you. This was definitely not an exhaustive list of the numbers and exact how-tos today. Just my take on some of the main things I kept in mind while I was building this base for you guys. I want others to enjoy satisfactory as I do and get as much out of their game time as they possibly can. So, if I can give you some organizational, strategic, and organic tips that I use to maximize my fun, maybe, just maybe, I can save a few minutes of your time and provide you something relaxing to watch while you game, work, or dream about gaming while away perusing YouTube. Because you watched today's video, you are a true pioneering industrialist and have had a friendly reminder that you can always break your gaming sessions into smaller, digestible play sessions. My hope is to share my perspectives so that you and I both can continue to efficiently and effectively reap the best reward from playing this game. The most fun for the most time you put in. All right, that will do it for today's video, and I want to thank you for sticking with me this far. I hope you enjoyed the tips. There are endless ways to enjoy and approach Satisfactory and other titles like it. This video just shares my approach that maximizes my personal enjoyment, but also yields some impressive production and structures with good old-fashioned hard work. Please be sure to keep an eye on my channel so that you can see where I go next with this playthrough. Now that I have the claw hooked up in my Satisfactory save, I can make more content showing you my playstyle in action. I didn't want to start from scratch with my first YouTube videos. I wanted to bring something to the table that was far enough along that we could get into some really interesting experiences. There are many YouTubers out there that do an excellent job of covering the mechanics and create excellent tutorials. Be sure to check them out. There are so many good experiences of Satisfactory documented here on YouTube. It really is an excellent community. More satisfactory and realistic, practical guides and perspectives are already on the way. So I need your help to create a community that showcases what time, patience, and a little bit of creativity, industrialism, and automation can produce, both for gaming entertainment and for brain food. Lastly, if you made it this far in the video and you liked my content, please leave a like, subscribe if you think I earned it, and share this video with friends. It may be some time before YouTube puts me in the feed. Let's get there together. When I said this at the end of my last video, I meant it. The fried industry needs you. Stay fresh, stay effective, and stay you.